Welcome back to Book Break and welcome back to our June book haul. If you've not seen one of these before, we do them every month here on Book Break. I am going to unbox for you a box here full of some of our most exciting books published throughout the month of June from Pam Macmillan. I never know what's going to be in these. Elle, who's the other half of the Book Break team, has packed me a massive looking box here. I swear they get bigger every single month. So let's dive straight in and see what's in the box. First up, we have Love Like Farms by BK Borison. Now, if you are following us over on TikTok, you will know Carol Ann. She is our TikTok presenter and she is completely obsessed with this book and this whole series. So she has been telling all of us that we need to read them. This is a cozy romance. It's set on a Christmas tree farm. I am already sold. A handsome freckled data analyst meets a messy, optimistic Christmas tree farm owner in a small town with the best hazelnut lattes on the east coast can't get better than that green wild the world behind the door by parry thompson is a middle grade adventure story this looks really gorgeous it's set in a kind of cute gardens inspired magical garden the green wild full of incredible botanical wonders this land of green magic holds the key to finding daisy's mother daisy is the main character of this book and she has escaped from boarding school in order to find her missing mother it looks really gorgeous, especially look at these M papers with a map of the garden. This is one of my favourites. Briefly, A Delicious Life by Nell Stevens is now out in paperback. This is a historical fiction novel narrated by a queer, vengeful teenage ghost. The ghost is called Blanca. She has been haunting this monastery for hundreds of years, watching all the people who come to visit and this particular visit is actually based on a true historical story. So this is when the musician Chopin came to stay at a monastery in Mallorca with his lover, George Sand, who was a cross-dressing woman, and they had this disastrous holiday in Mallorca. So the author Nell Stevens has taken this true story, but told a fictionalized version of it that's all narrated by the teenage ghost. Blanca, who has slightly fallen in love with George Sand. It's a really gorgeous book. I've been raving about this one for months to anyone who will listen, and a lot of it here on Book Break, so you may have heard me talk about this one before. I really recommend this for a summer paperback to take on holiday. In fact, I say so in the video coming up later this week called Paperbacks to Take on Holiday. While we're in the magical world, the next two books I've pulled out of this box fit that theme. So The Minuscule Mansion of Myra Malone is a magical story about an enchanted doll's house. Myra Malone is this woman who lives, she's a recluse, she lives in her attic, she never leaves her house and she writes a blog about her doll's house and she creates all these gorgeous pieces of furniture and she arranges the doll's house and kind of tells this narrative about it and people are obsessed with her blog but what she doesn't tell them is that the doll's house is in fact magic and sometimes whole rooms will appear and disappear overnight. Even weirder is the fact that all the way across the country a young man called Alex finds this blog and discovers that the house looks exactly like his real house. So it's a love story with this kind of magical folklore through it, it's really lovely, really sweet. And The First Bright Thing by J.R. Dawson is set in a circus. This is a time travel story. It's a really lovely story of found family and queer love and hope. It's also a very dark story because this book is set in between the two world wars. So of course, they don't know at the beginning of this book that a second world war is coming. And each of the characters have sparks, which are these magical powers that randomly developed through the first world war. So when people were most in need of a bit of magic, I suppose, these powers just sprung up amongst certain people in the population. And those people are called sparks and they are hunted by some of the non-magical population. So they try and keep their sparks hidden. But some of their sparks include time travel and include seeing the future. And so you realize that something very, very dark is coming. And some of the scenes in this book are so dark and so terrifying. It's a really wonderful book. Okay, this next book is distinctly non-magical. This is The Fall of Boris Johnson by Sebastian Payne, and it promises to tell the full story. The Fall of Boris Johnson is the explosive inside account of how a prime minister lost his hold on power. And it includes a brand new chapter for the paperback 
on Boris Johnson's failed comeback. So you get a proper inside look, it reveals a lot. It has been described in the back here as genuinely page turning, entertaining and illuminating. And for another fascinating political book, The Sister by Sung Yoon Lee, this tells the story of Kim Yo Jong, in other words, the sister of Kim Jong Un. It says right here on the front, she is the most powerful woman in North Korea. In 2022, in a particularly fiery speech, Kim Yo Jong threatens to nuke South Korea, reminding the world of the dangers posed by her rogue state. So this book looks at how she became the person that she is, the grip that the Kim dynasty has had on the country for three generations now, and the signs that Kim Yo Jong might be positioned to be her brother's successor. This family terrify me. This book looks fascinating. Let's move back to some fiction. Next in the box is Locks by Ashley Nugent. This is a story about racial identity. It's about a mixed race teenager living in Liverpool who sort of feels like this identity of being black has been put on him by his family, but he doesn't actually really have many black people in his life. And so he decides to take a trip to Jamaica to kind of reconnect with his own racial heritage. But when he gets there, he finds that they see him as white. So it's this journey of self-discovery that ends up with him winding up in a Jamaican detention center and having to really get to grips with who he feels he really is. And then we have a very talked about new release here, Everything's Fine by Cecilia Robess. This book is absolutely fascinating. It tells the story of a young black woman called Jess who gets her first job working in finance and there she finds herself working with a young white man called Josh who she vaguely knows from university or college, they're American, um, where they did not get on. They have very different politics, they have very different views of the world and yet in this really cutthroat environment of their workplace they find themselves making friends and even more. Jess was such an interesting character to me. The book is really about her figuring out what it means to live in line with her own values. There's loads of ways in which the career path that she has chosen doesn't fit with what she believes in life. And it is not a friendly environment to her as a black woman at all. And so much as she kind of spars with Josh, she finds herself needing him. Josh is fiscally conservative. He views himself as more socially liberal, he does not see himself as racist, and he falls in love with Jess. But she realises pretty early on that it's not just a political debate, that some of the things that he believes go against her whole identity, her whole right to exist in the world. And so in this book, Cecilia Robess is really questioning it's not so much whether you can date across political lines, but whether you should. And again, let's look at these gorgeous M pages. I love this whole photo shoot, so cool. Got a chunky hardback here, The Square of Sevens by Laura Shepard Robinson. This is a historical fiction mystery about a young woman with a lot of questions about her past. And the book takes you from Bath to London to Cornwall. I don't think I said those places in the right order, but it does cover all of those places. I work a lot with influencers in my job here at Pam Macmillan. I work a lot with the online book community and this is the book that they are raving about. I have seen so many five-star reviews online for this book. And the square of sevens from the title refers to a fortune telling method. That is how this girl read and her father used to make their living, was telling fortunes. And in this book, not only do we have gorgeous end papers, but we also have family trees and maps. Stone Blind by Natalie Haynes is out in paperback now. This is another of my summer holiday paperback recommendations. This is a retelling of the story of Medusa and it totally questions everything that you think you know about Medusa. Like, was she actually the villain of that story? In typical Natalie Haynes fashion, it is very witty. It is very powerful. It is full of anger. I absolutely loved this book. I always feel like I learn so much more about Greek mythology every time I read a book from Natalie Haynes because she brings in so many different characters, shows you how all of their stories fit together. It's really clever. 
I Kissed Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuiston is a really fun YA novel, a queer YA novel about the beautiful blonde Shara Wheeler who goes missing, leaving behind clues in little pink envelopes for three seemingly randomly selected people who have to go on this kind of treasure hunt to find out what happened to her and there are going to be unexpected love stories along the way. I feel like this book is kind of made for me as a fan of teen high school comedies. It's like take everything you love about all of your favourite iconic high school movies but make it gay. And for some more queer YA, I've got Cupid's Revenge by Vibka Brueggemann. I love this writer, I think she's so funny. I wish she had been writing books when I was a teenager, but no matter, I intend to enjoy them all now as an adult, and I have loved both of her books so far. So Cupid's Revenge is the second one that I've read, and this is about Tilly, who falls for the girl that her best friend Teddy is in love with. So Teddy is obsessed with this girl, Catherine Cooper Bunting, and he convinces Tilly to try out for the play with him just so that he can get closer to Catherine, but Tilly wasn't expecting to fall for Catherine herself. There is a whole fantasy, or rather romanticy, series in here. Kushal's Dart, Chosen and Avatar, all by Jacqueline Carey. So these books I have heard people talking about because these were actually originally published in 2001 and now they are coming back. Olivia Blake herself described this as the ultimate romanticy. I also love these taglines an intoxicating fantasy of intrigue and betrayal, a sensuous fantasy of sacrifice and conspiracy, and a sumptuous fantasy of defiance and redemption. They're about a servant transformed into a charming courtesan and skillful spy. This is your new series to get obsessed with. Olive Blake said so. While we're in the romanticy genre, A Taste of Golden Iron by Alexandra Rowland has just come out in paperback. This is a whole new cover and I think this is beautiful. It's a romance between a prince and his bodyguard, but it's set in a fantasy world. One false move could topple their kingdom. Another paperback for your holiday reading, Trust by Hernan Diaz. I love this new cover, it really um, conveys the era that it's set in. So this is a book within a book within a book, it's so clever. It's essentially four retellings of the same story but from different perspectives and each time you reread the story you learn something new, you question something, you completely doubt who you can trust. Seemingly the story is about a Wall Street tycoon and his wife who rise to the top of New York society. But there's more to the story as you'll see on each retelling. For a fun page-turning thriller, The Villa by Ruth Kelly is about a reality show set on an island. It's really fun summer reading. Ten contestants are competing for a cash prize. The whole thing is being live streamed to a global audience who have total control over the contestants. So it's got that extra kind of dystopian level there and the contestants would do anything to win, really anything. It's giving me Love Island vibes, but darker. It's giving me Unreal vibes, that TV show that was about the producers behind the scenes of The Bachelor. It sounds right up my alley. Another dark book, a very quick read, We Had to Remove This Post by Hannah Barefoot. This is a novel about content moderators. So our main character gets a job basically moderating the comments on a social media website and deciding which things should be removed or not. And her and her entire team begin to lose their own sense of right or wrong, their own sense of morality from doing this job. So it's a, a really compulsive, quick read that takes you to a dark place. Some non-fiction here, The Rise and Reign of the Mammals by Steve Brusate. Forget dinosaurs, mammals are the really interesting thing to read about. Look how terrifying this is, honestly. That's worse than a T-Rex. In this deeply researched, entertaining book, Brusate summarises why and how mammals have managed to hold sway for so much of the last 65 million years. Because let's not forget, mammals did survive whatever it was that killed off the dinosaurs. And we're mammals, so we're pretty tough. And another non-fiction, Brown Girl Like Me, is the essential guidebook and manifesto for South Asian girls and women. I just love this cover, it's such a great image. So this book tackles a lot of the questions that 
brown girls like Jess Breet are tackling all the time and that some of the rest of us maybe aren't noticing or thinking about but really should be engaging with. Hearts and Bones is a collection of short stories by the Irish writer Neve Mulvey. They all explore what love does to us and how we survive it. Set between Ireland and London, this outstanding collection glitters with wisdom, humanity and devastating honesty. That just sounds brilliant. We're nearly at the bottom of the box, so my last few books I have here In the Summertime by Maeve Haran. This looks like a lovely holiday read. In the summertime makes us realise that there's nothing quite like old friends and new love in a long hot English summer by the sea. Sounds fantastic. Our main character's marriage is falling apart, her holiday has been cancelled and so she sets off to the beautiful South Downs with a group of old friends. But while there she bumps into Daniel, her shy and awkward teenage dancing partner, now an alarmingly attractive man. Put this one in your suitcase, it sounds like a perfect holiday read. And then my last two in the box are for young readers or the young at heart. So first up, The Misunderstandings of Charity Brown by Elizabeth Laird. Elizabeth Laird is an award-winning author, she's fantastic. This book is about Charity Brown, whose family have been left a huge rambling house and her parents, her very religious family, want to throw open its doors to those in need. It's a recipe for confusion, joy and endless misunderstandings and it's been described here as a total pleasure. And finally, a gorgeous illustrated book, The Last Dragon in Moomin Valley. So this is the latest addition to the collection of gorgeous adaptations of the Moomin Valley stories. So this one is a newly illustrated retelling of the classic Moomin short story, The Last Dragon. It's been reinterpreted for a whole new generation of Moomin fans with gorgeous illustrations throughout. There's the dragon. So there you go, another massive book haul. I am actually developing muscles for the first time in my life from lugging these book hauls up and down the stairs every month. So let me know in the comments below which of those books you are most excited to get your hands on this month and I will link here to a playlist of all of our previous book hauls so you can go and check them out and I'll see you next time.